I'm Jim Carafon at the Heritage Foundation. Normally, I'm in charge of foreign policy, but I am a complete and unforgiven and unrepentant movie addict. I love movies. And one of the things that movies can often be best about is thinking about how do we feel about the kind of leader that we want to lead us in a crisis. And these movies, I think, do that really well. All right, so this film is Independence Day. It's a great movie. Everybody loves this movie. This film reminds me of a quote by a, a great general named Matthew Ridgway who said, never tie up your dogs and bark yourself. And what he meant is leaders should only do the thing that a leader can do. And the stuff that other people can do that they're better at, that, that, that they're, they should let them do that. So the, the president of the United States should be leading the free world. He shouldn't be out in a fighter plane. We have fighter pilots for doing that. He should let Will Smith save the world. That's right! That's right! Why the hell wasn't I told about this place? Two words, Mr. President. Plausible deniability. I love this movie. This is a example of a terrible president. First of all, what kind of, what kind of accountability do we have here? The president doesn't even know that we have aliens and, and nobody's accounting for this multi-billion dollar secret research lab? Oops, oops. Uh, this is not, this is not the Washington that we want. This is not. This is not presidential leadership. Bill Pullman, he's a no. The next film is Wind and the Lion, which is really about Sean Connery wanting to do anything other than be James Bond. So here he is a, uh, a Bedouin sheik who kidnaps an American woman and Teddy Roosevelt has to send in the Marines to save her. Take a note to the Winchester Repeating Arms Company, New Haven, Connecticut. Dear sirs, I have received my improved model 1895 Winchester and 405 caliber. As you and I both know, this is a very fine rifle. However, once again, you have blundered, both in regard to the stock dimensions and the recoil pad. How long will these mistakes be repeated, eh? After all, I am the president of the United States. I see no reason why an American president can't get satisfaction from an American gunmaker, eh? What must I do for proper fitting? So I love this movie. First of all, great shout out for the Second Amendment there. Pretty awesome. Um, president's obviously unhappy with his with his rifles. If only they'd had the Defense Production Act back then, he, he could have exercised some presidential leadership and fixed that. But what we love about this film is Teddy Roosevelt was a decisive president. And the other thing we love about Teddy Roosevelt is he was a genuine, this is genuinely who he was. He never, tried to fit in with Washington. He never tried to be anything other than what he was. Uh, and, and and actually this reminds me a lot of Trump. I think Trump would get up on uh, on the Oval Office and growl like a grizzly bear if he, if he thought that's what he needed to do to get people's attention. Growl again, Father. You like that? Ah! Gentlemen, nothing in this world is certain. Absolutely nothing. The fate of the nation will be decided by the American people in November, and the fate of Morocco will be decided tomorrow by me. Teddy Roosevelt was a president with a lot of over-the-top rhetoric, but he was also a decisive leader who acted in the national interest and protecting America's interests uh, in the Mediterranean, which was a key uh, trading route for the United States. That that was important, uh, and 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 you know spoke loudly, but he also carried a, a big stick and. I think that's what we want for a president. I think that's one of the reasons why Trump's response in the pandemic uh, and in leadership in general is so effective and, and, and also kind of explains a lot of his critics. They focus on the big, loud rhetoric and that they ignore the action. You just can't cherry pick. If you want to look at a president, look at both what they do. You, you cannot watch The Wind and the Lion without giving Teddy Roosevelt two thumbs up. This is exactly how we would want a president to act in a crisis, this is a yes. This film is Hyde Park. But let me confess something to you now. 
as you have been so honest with me. No one ever mentions the fact that I can't use my legs. It's never referred to, not by anyone. And I used to think it was because they were embarrassed about it. But now I think it's because it's not what they want to see. Of course, you and I, we think they see everything that we are. All our flaws, you know, our transgressions, our failures. But that's not what they're looking to find when they look to us. And God help us if that ever changes. Can you imagine the disappointment when they find out what we really are? What you have to remember is, you know, no human is perfect. And, and we don't grade leaders on being perfect. We grade leaders on do they do great things? And in the end, are they the people of character? Do they put the interests of the nation above themselves? And so clearly in World War II, FDR is a great leader. He puts the interests of America first. And he literally, we wouldn't have freedom in the world today without his leadership and without the American accomplishments in World War II. So the, this film actually shows kind of the, the, the more questionable side of FDR, but it, it doesn't undermine the fact that he was really a great leader. Hyde Park, FDR, yes, that's the president we want to have in a crisis. It's good, it's all fine. I'll have another. <laughs> so this film is 2012. What's the matter, sweetie? She can't find her daddy. Why don't you two get comfy on that couch? Sally, come help them out, okay? I'll find your daddy. What's, you know, what's the president doing? Uh, he's kind of roaming around. Um, I guess he's got nothing else to do, which I don't know what that means for the transfer of power since the president's not really kind of doing anything anyway. What's happening? The Capitol's been hit by a 9.4. Last communication with the White House, sir. Where's the center? North Chesapeake Bay. Mr. Anheuser, the Russian president's on the line, sir. Excuse me. You just entered Chinese airspace. Um, that's affirmative, Mr. President. Until communication is restored, I suppose I am in command. It appears that all other heads of state are en route, with the exception of the Italian prime minister, who has also decided to stay behind and trust in prayer. I don't think the constitutional lawyers would be at all happy with this. There is a kind of a chain of command that you go through for uh, custody of the, the, the presidency, if the president is incapable of performing it. But I, I don't think the, the, the guy with the pick up the phone gets to call the Russians and say, I'm in charge here. So it's kind of an Al Haig moment there, uh, but that's just Hollywood. Of course, the whole point of this whole film is, is in crisis, presidents are supposed to do something and, and, and Danny Glover pretty much just does nothing until he gets pancaked by, a, by an aircraft carrier. So that's a, as a president leadership in a crisis, Danny Glover's a no. Welcome to Iron Sky. What's helium three? Helium. Did you say helium three? Yeah, there's like 15 to 20 giant towers that appear to be full of the stuff. Uh, that's ours. It is? Why? Helium-3 would make the U.S. independent of all energy needs for the next thousand years. Oh. Yes, it's ours. Oh, this is not no, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me out. The moon is American soil. Moon flag, stars and stripes. Who beat the moon Nazis? 
We do. Well, yeah, yeah, all right. You helped out here and there, but ultimately, it's just like World War II and who won that? We did. So, you probably didn't read this in your high school textbook, but apparently the Nazis escaped to the moon, where they set up a moon base, and then the Nazis come back and invade the world. Look, this is a no-go in global leadership. If you go watch the sequels, which are even more terrible than this film, you actually find out that the, this is a spoiler alert, the president's actually an alien from another planet. You don't believe me? Watch the movies. Movies don't lie. This is, this is not the president you want to have in the White House in a crisis. Let me just leave it at that. This film is 13 days. Gentlemen, I want first reactions here. Uh, assuming for the moment that Khrushchev is not going off the deep end and intends to start World War III, what are we looking at? Well, Mr. President, uh, I believe my team is in agreement. If we permit the introduction of nuclear missiles to a Soviet satellite nation in our hemisphere, the diplomatic consequences will be too terrible to contemplate. Not a perfect historical recreation of what happened during the Cuban Missile Crisis in the 1960s when the Soviets were trying to put nuclear weapons into Cuba and the United States forced them to withdraw. But it's a, a very, very faithful recreation of the dynamics that went on. Really great exemplar of a, of a president acting in a crisis uh, in, a, in a deliberate, serious uh, manner. We worked up several military scenarios. Before I ask General Taylor to take us through the various options, I'd like for us to adopt a rule. If we decide to strike, we must agree now to do it before the missiles become operational. This was the 1960s. This is the way things work. You look around that ta table, it's a bunch of middle-aged white guys who all went to Harvard. You look at the crisis action team that leads this country today, and it has the diversity that reflects all the greatness of America. Now that's not staged, so we can say we're diverse, it's because those people are the talented people who are leading this country. JFK, Cuban Missile Crisis, definitely a yes, definitely a president we want to have in a crisis. You have just seen six movies that show you the best and worst ways a president could possibly act in a crisis. When you look at these films and you look at the, the positive character traits, the, the decision-making, the putting the interest of the nation first that you would want, I think the Trump movie would be much more, yeah, this is a president that we want in a crisis more than enough.